Hi there, in this video we'll be looking at using Puppeteer, which is a node-based library that comes from the Google Chrome team, to take a screenshot of our web page. Now this is quite easy, because the Puppeteer library is effectively a high-level API that allows us to control a headless version of Google Chrome. So, as you can imagine, with Google Chrome we have things like keyboard input, we have things like form submission, screenshots, PDFs of pages, and much more. So in this video, we'll be installing the library inside of our project, we'll be taking a screenshot of the page, and in general, we'll be exposed to the power of Puppeteer. So if you haven't already, make sure you have Node.js installed. You can find Node at nodejs.org, or alternatively install it with Homebrew. We then are going to run npm init-y inside of a new folder, and as you can see, this just makes us a package.json with all of the default values, like so. Next, we'll install Puppeteer. I'm using npm6, so I don't need to run dash s to save this to our package.json. It happens automatically. As you can see, when we do this, it does need to download a version of Chromium, and this should be the latest version of Chromium. And if you have a Chromium installation that you'd rather use instead of this one, you can actually point Puppeteer towards that. But we're happy with using this version, so just let this download. Depending on the speed of your internet connection, it's around 76 megabytes at this moment, so it may take some time, or it may be very fast. Awesome, we've now installed the library, so we can require this by saying const puppeteer and use require of the library puppeteer. Next up, we might want to make a function, and that function will be called take screenshot. And this will be an async function. Inside of here, we need to establish a browser, and that can be done by using await puppeteer.launch. This now launches a browser instance, and if we want, we can pass some arguments at this point. But for now, we'll just simply launch this. This then gives us access to an instance of our browser, and we can use that to, of course, perform a variety of actions. So we'll now create a page, and that can be done by awaiting on browser dot and as you can see, we can scroll down until we get a new page. This gives us access to a new page, which we can then control. So as you may imagine, the page has a variety of different elements. We have everything from click to close to content for getting the full HTML content of a page. But we're looking for go to. Go to allows us to navigate to a URL. So let's go to my site. And we also now have a handy page.screenshot. And as you can see, the screenshot method at this point captures a screenshot of the page. We can optionally provide some screenshot options into this page.screenshot. If we look at the code and we look at the screenshot options, you can see that the interface allows us to optionally add a path. That's of course the file path that we want to save the image to. We can, if we want, define a type. This defaults to a PNG, but we can also use a JPEG if we want. We can add a quality to the image, and what this does is we'll determine the file size. So if we want a really big or really high quality image, of course we'd use 100. And if we wanted a lower quality image, we'd use a number maybe like 50, 75, or even smaller than that, around 30. We can optionally take a screenshot of the full page. That would be good if you wanted to take the entire scrollable body of a page. We can draw a bounding box with the clip attribute here, and this allows us to set an X, a Y, and a width and a height to determine a sort of clipping area of the page. And finally, we have the option to hide the default white background, which allows us to, of course, capture screenshots with transparency. So as you can see, we can do quite a bit here to change the way that the screenshot looks. The main thing that we need at this point is a path, because if we don't specify a path, 
then we can see that the image will not be saved to the disk. And that's what we want at this point. We want the image to be saved, so we'll provide a path. So let's provide some options. And the path will be slash images. Let's make sure we have a directory called images. And that's done by using the make directory command. We won't need the quality because that's of course a PNG by default and we'll keep it that way. We'll set emit background equal to true. We'll also use the full page because we want the entire scrollable body of the page. And I think we're happy with that. Because both of these page elements return a promise, we'll also need to await on these elements. So let's await on the page go to and the page screenshot, and we'll pass in the options. After this is done, we can await on the browser close, because this will then, as we can see here, close the browser with all the pages, and we can no longer use that browser method from here on out. So this object rather is gone, and it should be considered to be disposed of. We then may want to put this inside of some library that we have, and we would then, of course, use take screenshots to take a screenshot. And hopefully we should see that we end up with an image inside of our images folder. The only one thing we need to fix now is a slight error with the path. Instead, we want to say images and then the screenshot name. So for now, we'll just call this website.png. And at this moment in time, it's considered to be the current working directory. So this is the root path at this point, slash images, slash website.png. So if we open up our terminal and we say node app.js, or whatever you've called your project, it should then go to paulhalliday.io or the link that you want because it's made a new Chrome browser. It's made a new page. It's navigated to that page and then taken a screenshot with the options we've provided. It should then close the browser so it's out of memory and we should be able to navigate to that file. Here we are, we can see the full body of the web page on screen. We can zoom in if we want, like so. And we can do whatever we want with this library to create screenshots on the fly. I mean, I can think of tons of uses for this. There's already libraries built around the whole sort of snapshot testing of a website. But I'd like to know what you think of this video and what you think of Puppeteer. Do you want to see more Puppeteer content? If you do, let me know inside of the comments section below. Until then, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Oh, this new crazy mother.